I really have no concept of time in this dark place. The only way I'm able to judge days passing is by the dinner delivery I receive. It's the only meal a day I get. Otherwise, I sit in the dark room and I cry. There's nothing more I can do. Try to escape? Well, of course I've tried that. The first few days, that's all I did. I looked for weak points in the room, tried to pry the door off the hinges, tried to bang and scream and yell. Nothing happened. The person keeping me here didn't even come to shut me up. Either he likes the sound of my struggles or the place he has me in is soundproofed. I came to realize there was no sense in struggling anymore. There was no escape from this place and no one was ever going to hear me. Besides, my strength started to leave me. All I get a day is a small cup of water and a minimal ration of food. Barely enough to stay alive. After a while, my energy became reduced to almost zero. Even if I wanted to get up and scream, I doubt I could physically manage it. For the first few days, I was terrified. Then, that fear turned to anger. I hated the person doing this to me. But now, that anger has turned to longing. If only I knew why this was being done to me. I think in the stages of grief, I have long passed acceptance. Now I want to know why. At least, if the man came in here and tortured me, I would understand he was a psychopath and enjoyed it. Kidnapping someone to let them rot away makes no sense. What purpose does it serve? And don't think I haven't tried to find out. Most days, when the hooded man brings me my food, I beg and plead to be told why. Just a simple answer about why I'm here. In the whole time I've been here, they haven't uttered a single word to me. To be honest, I'm not even sure the person holding me hostage is a man or a woman. I haven't even seen their face. They drop off the food and go. It's almost like they don't want to be in the room with me. What kind of psychopath doesn't enjoy watching their victims get tortured? In the early days, I was chained to the wall. But once I became too weak to hardly move, the chains were removed. It must have been done while I was sleeping because I woke up one day with them gone. It's terrifying to think someone was inches from my body while I slept, but then again, this whole affair is. They say Stockholm Syndrome can start to materialize in people held captive. After spending so much time with a captor, a hostage can start to sympathize with their captor and even believe they're there to help. If I ever make it out of this alive, they're gonna have to come up with a new syndrome. One where the captive person longs for a relationship with the person who took them captive. I'm sure my case has never been seen before. It may sound bizarre, but I would give anything to know my captor. I haven't given up yet, in case that's what you were thinking. I still don't want to die. Even after everything I've been through, I still know I need to hang on to the hope that I'll make it through this. And because my captor has yet to threaten me or show any hostility towards me, I feel as if I have a good chance to make that happen. If he continues to bring me food and water every day, I can stay alive long enough for rescue to come. There must be someone looking for me. I have friends and family out there. Someone is worried about me. The police are most likely involved, and the longer he keeps me alive, the better chance I have at being found. Somewhere in the back of my mind, the fear that the food and water will stop coming flutters. It's a thought I would rather keep buried, but it keeps fighting its way to the surface. I don't want to starve to death. I'm weak and in enough pain as it is. I can't imagine more of this. I always thought drowning would be the worst way to go, but I think starvation may have it beat. I have no energy, and I can barely move. 
but I feel every ounce of pain from my body starving to death. Only, I never quite get there because of the small portions keeping me alive. It's excruciating. And like I said, the will to live is still present. I would have thought death would be an embrace in a situation like this, but it isn't. There's still so much I haven't done, so much I want to see, things I want to do. I always put off traveling because I figured there would be time later. Being locked in this room is giving me too much time to think. If my captor was in here torturing me every day, I would probably be begging for death. But the loneliness and the silence only serve to make me long for the life I could be living. And maybe that's what my captor is doing to me. Maybe he knows this is the worst torture of all, leaving me alone with my thoughts while I slowly starve to death. Only what pleasure does it bring him? I still don't understand. I've looked around the room for cameras or peepholes. I thought maybe he watches my misery from the safety of another room. There seems to be nothing. If he is watching me, I have no idea how. Still, if my captor was watching me, I don't understand what pleasure it brings. This must be the most boring torture to watch. Most of my days are spent sitting right here, doing nothing. If you want the story about how I was captured, I'm sorry to disappoint. I don't remember. Everything before this room is blurry. Thinking about it now, most of my life before this room is a blur. Was I married? Did I have kids? Where did I work? How old was I? What's my name? I... I can't remember. No matter how hard I try, I can't remember any of it. It seems all I can remember now is this damned room. It must be the starvation and the delirium getting to me. How could someone forget all these things about themselves? Could it be possible that I have amnesia? I have no idea how to tell if that's what I have. There's always a possibility that my captor drugged me to keep me from remembering. Maybe it's in the food. But I don't know if a drug like that exists. I want to remember something about my life. Anything. I want to more than I want freedom from this place. If I could at least remember what I have at home, maybe I could remember what's worth fighting for. I could remember why I want to make it out of here alive. Refusing to eat would only get me killed. At this point, I feel missing even one meal would make me pass out and die. And I've come too far to die like that now. I'm not going to give that bastard in the other room the satisfaction. After all this time, I've come to the conclusion that watching a person slowly die brings them joy. He doesn't like torture or gore. He likes to watch the life drain from another human being. Well, I'm not going to give him that satisfaction. Next time he comes in here, I'm going to use this last bit of my strength to attack him and knock him to the floor. Even if I don't manage to escape, I would like to at least see his face. Maybe ask him why. Tonight, I will get answers. Last night, I managed to spring on my captor while he was bringing me food. The events which transpired after are hard to explain. First, I should explain that my captor has always dressed in baggy black clothing. A hoodie and baggy pants, black gloves, everything is covered. I've never so much as seen a small patch of skin. So yesterday, when I leapt through the air and ran my body into his, I was surprised when nothing happened. I found myself on the floor in a mess of black clothing. Thinking my captor had somehow threw off his clothes, I managed to look up from the floor in my weakened state. There was nothing there. All that was left was a pile of clothing. There was no possible way he had escaped as I had landed closer to the door, but somehow he had vanished. As unbelievable as it sounds, no one has been bringing me food this entire time. And yet, someone had been bringing me food. My mind raced with questions as I lay sprawled out on the floor in my weak state. I started to wonder how much of it was all an illusion. If the person bringing me food wasn't real, what else wasn't real? 
Which brought me to a more important question. If the food wasn't real, how was I still alive? Why was I weak? That's when I realized I wasn't weak anymore. The feelings of starvation and hunger were gone. I pulled myself to my feet and looked around. Was the room an illusion too? But it didn't disappear like the captor or my symptoms. The first thing I did was try the door and found it locked. Whatever was going on, I was truly trapped in this room. If I was trapped, why the illusions? More importantly, how? That's when I heard, felt, and smelled everything around me. There were screams in the distance, howling screams of pain and immense suffering. The air around me was stifling and hot. At last, I smelled the brimstone. That was the giveaway. My knees buckled and I collapsed on the floor. This whole time I had wondered why my captors hadn't told me why I was here and why they were doing this to me. I spent so much time sitting in that corner feeling weak and hungry, wondering when I would starve to death. The answer was clear now. I was already dead, and this is hell. This room, this torture, was hell. At least, my hell. Like a dull headache, I could feel those current memories start to fade away. Like the memories of who I was before this, I wouldn't remember a thing. Desperate to remember, I found something to write with in some old slips of paper, and I wrote down my story. I placed the paper on top of an old desk in the corner of the dilapidated room. I noticed an open drawer and hundreds upon thousands of handwritten notes inside. Sifting through them as fast as I could, I realized they all had one thing in common. I had written them, all outlining my story, trapped in hell. How long have I been here? I tried to cry, but tears wouldn't form. Instead, the memories started to drift away faster. Now the chain is wrapped around my ankle again, and I'm having trouble remembering even more. Soon I fear I will be back in that corner and starving all over again. I didn't want to die before. I wanted to survive so I could escape. Now, I want to die for good. I wish the afterlife was nothing but darkness instead of this terrible... It's been days, maybe even weeks since I've been here. <laughs>